Welcome to the Keelhauled Podcast. I'm the voice of Sea of Thieves, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news for you. So tie yourself to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates! I hope you had yourself a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. All right, Pirates, this week I have none other than Super Pack CJ from the Player One podcast, also in the Keelhaul Discord, joining me this week as we dive into Lost Treasures. There's a lot to cover, and we did it informally, so as much of the notes as I was able to get in, we tried to talk about that. But as always, uh, I hope that you guys just enjoy this episode, and thanks again to CJ for joining me on this week's episode. Next week, we will probably be diving into more specific notes as we go into Sea of Thieves and see just how the uh, the rest of this update goes. And with that, Pirates, episode number 122 of the Keel Hauled Podcast. All right. Well, CJ, how you doing, man? I'm doing very well. How are you, Logan? Good, good. Welcome back to the show. It's been a while. Good to be back. Glad to have you on this one. This is one where I know... I know you're not huge into lore, but I know you love no, this game. I do. And right. I know you don't always get a chance to to really chat about the game, which is why I was thinking it, it was well past due for you to get back on and, and talk some Sea of Thieves with me. Sounds good. Let's do it. So we are in the midst of the Lost Treasures update. And as I was kind of throwing the notes together just before we started recording, I... I'm actually really surprised. I don't think I really grasped just how much came in this update compared to Ships of Fortune. Um, Yeah. As I was digging through the show notes uh, or the actual release notes, I was like, wow, they they actually put a a fair amount of stuff in here. Now, a lot of it's cosmetics and a lot of it's changes and quality of life. And it's, it's weird because... Aside from all the cool stuff that they've actually done with this update, I'm actually not feeling that positive on it. Mm-hmm. And okay. I'm, I'm, it's a lot of it has to do with the fact that with when I jumped back in, I felt like I was getting, I felt like I was going to be getting shroud, shrouded spoils. And I don't think I, I got shrouded spoils. I think I got something different. And what I got was not what I was expecting because shrouded spoils was was really an amazing update like we we managed to get a lot of a lot of stuff fixed in that update and it was probably the it was probably the cleanest the game felt since launch really uh we we really didn't have any problems with shrouded spoils and going into lost treasures um i'm curious how you feel overall about it because i i don't know maybe it's just some of this stuff doesn't pertain to me but i I don't feel like it's hitting where it needs to for me, even though mm-hmm. I just went through the show note or I just went through the release notes and found a ton of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's a good change. That's a positive change. Right. So how, how are you feeling about this? Help me out here. I'm pretty positive on the update overall. Like I think it uh, has a lot of quality of life fixes that are positive changes. And for me, especially the events hub is something that, I think is a a great addition to the game. Although yeah. some of the initial challenges are maybe a little bit too difficult or, uh, you know, they, they've done these sort of challenges before. But they've only mm-hmm. done like week long things. They, and with the event hub, they've added just a lot of things that you can do uh, daily, weekly, and, uh, and over a longer period of time. So um, yeah. I'm curious to see how they balance that out. I think some of them are a little bit unattainable <laughs> for most people, but uh, you know, I'm curious to see how they just hash all this out. And uh, if you know, they take a look at the analytics and see that not many people are doing these, maybe uh, maybe some of them will get a little easier. Yeah. Well, we'll and, and I want to dive into that definitely later in the, in the show as well too. Um, so lost treasures came out. And it's got a, bottom, uh, a whole bunch of changes to it. And yeah. I, I wanted to kind of work through some of these. But the, the one that I think is actually the the biggest one for me is the one that I really don't need or, or care about. And that's that's actually the, the chapter, the checkpointing for mm-hmm. the tall tale system. And part of me is 
part of me is really kind of bummed out, honestly, that there isn't a tall tale to really test this out on unless I go mm -hmm. and do an older tall tale. But now you can go in. Each tall tale has uh, chapters. Once you complete a chapter, it's set. So if you log out, then you're golden. You can you can pop back into the game. You can start up your your treasure or your or excuse me your treasure your tall tale uh, back where you where you left off, and that includes items that you may lose. So say for example, you complete chapter two of uh, the Wild Rose, and you you lose out on. The, uh, the parts you need to to get the compass to find out where, uh, well, I'm not going to spoil it all, but if you know what I'm talking about, then it's it's pretty clear. You, you get items as you're playing through the tall tales, but if you lose those or they're stolen, that's kind of, that was kind of it. Like you had to restart it. And now with the chapter system, if that happens, then, you know, if it gets stolen and, and someone's trying to grief you with it, you can leave, start up on a new boat, and pick up where you left off and get that item back. Yeah. And I, 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 I this is something that you've wanted for a long time. You've wanted the, oh the God, tall tale yeah. items. Yeah. You've wanted the tall tale items as, as just like a permanent part of your inventory. So well, how a is it permanent part of your inventory, but some way to get them back if uh, you get sunk or somebody steals your stuff just because yeah. tall tale items aren't, are, you know, worthless to another crew, but getting them back or, <laughs> Getting retrieving them at all is pretty impossible. So to have a checkpointing system like this, I think is great, especially prior to the release on Steam. You know, I think you're going to have a lot of new people coming into the game, and they're probably going to try Tall Tales. And you don't want it to be an experience where they spend two hours trying to find something and lose it because another crew, you know, takes takes their quest items. So I think this is a great. Yeah change and i am not the player that who's run all of the tall tales five times yet so for me yeah. like i could potentially like um you know do the art of the trickster a couple more times to get that really cool cap stand you know and uh mm -hmm. i have i have not done that five times yet so uh this is going to encourage me to to do those things i think is it something where now, like, this is what will actually push you more than than is if they were to to come out with, say, like a, a new cosmetic that were to come at it? Like, it, uh, are yeah. you going to hold will you do you think you're going to hold off on doing future tall tales uh, that that, you know, you may have to do two or three times if you could break them up into smaller chunks? No, like okay. I, I, I. I I think I'll, you know, be happy if if Rare is able to implement this system with everything they they launch next. To like, if we get a new Tall Tale, I would imagine they're going to put a checkpoint system in there uh, yeah. right at right at the launch of that. So I think that'd be great. Um, and I've tried to do Tall Tales with uh, with people who are new to the game, or you know, people other than my regular crew, and. You know, sometimes it just takes a long time and a lot of people don't have the time to invest uh, in a tall tale that totally. uh, that it requires. So hugely yeah. positive change, I think. Yeah, I, I'm really happy about this. I'm looking forward to future tall tales so that I can kind of test this out and see how well it works. There's definitely times where I've been working on a tall tale and it's sending me to, um, I want to say it was like the, uh, oh, I just blinked on the star one. I can't, uh, stars of a thief, I think. Yep. It, yeah. I was working on that one and you get to the point where you have to go to the unmarked Island just South of, uh, crook mass and North of, of crooks hollow. And I remember the last time that I did it, I was so paranoid because uh, in the vicinity, um, there were three ships, like a sloop just sailing around. And then there were two Alliance to Briggs uh, doing Thieves Haven runs. And I was so tripped out because I, I was just like, all right, I just want to sail over here. I'm half tempted just to ditch the boat and take a rowboat and try and do this without like someone trying to come over and, and kill me and steal my stuff. Because yep. the last, I just don't, I just didn't want to have to go out there and try and find these little medallions to uh, finish the finish thing, the the actual tall tale, just to get the gem or the crystal to take back to uh, Smuds or Spuds. 
I can't remember his name. Uh, Suds. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to, just to lose it at the end there, like the last one I needed to get the curse, uh, yeah. and and it was so like I if I could have just checkpointed it completed the chapter, left that server, jumped into a fresh server and gone and done it, I probably would have had a lot less anxiety over yeah. the potential of losing it. And having having this option now, I imagine, will be a good relief because a lot of people who might be coming under attack or might be dealing with a really stressful situation can if if they can get to that checkpoint, if they can just go turn in this this thing, it may checkpoint in, in whatever happens afterwards doesn't matter because they can always leave the server, join up on a new server and stuff. The biggest concern that I, I have is there's, uh, unless you're actually reading the patch notes, which not a lot of people take the time or need the time or, 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 or not need the time, but uh, kind of have the time to be able to read the patch notes. This doesn't feel like a very intuitive system that they've implemented. It seems really strange when you go to the voyage table and it's asking you, do you want to start a tall tale that you can't check if you haven't already got one check bot or check marked or a, a voyage? So I'm, I'm wondering how do they like, how's the messaging come across so that people can understand this if they're not going to go out and watch a YouTube video or listen to a podcast or read patch notes? Yeah, I don't even think I understand how it works. <laughs> yeah, I need to. It, it, I need to start a tall tale again to see uh, how everything plays out. Can you do, can you have multiple checkpointed tall tales? Like, I, that's one thing I just don't know. Yeah, so each tall tale, all the way up to the to the current ones, have chapters, and as soon as you complete a chapter, it will bookmark it at that point. So you can okay. pick it up from there and you can do, uh, as far as I've read, you can do at least one checkpoint per tail. So if you start one and you get to a certain point and you, you're like, ah, I don't want to do this one. You want to go do another one, then you can pick up another one. And if you get halfway through that one, you can checkpoint it by completing the chapter or up to a chapter. And then it'll, it'll, uh, you can kick out of that one and, and pick up another one. So you okay. can have multiple, it's kind of like, um, I would imagine save scumming with uh, with with like uh, uh, the switch online where you have like the different games you can kind of quick save and, and have those quick cho quick save points that you can kind of pop back into whenever you want. OK. But you were talking a little bit ago about how you're happy with the the, the event hub. Yes. And that that's kind of I love this because. It, it's something that I think Sea of Thieves is needed. I think it's something that Sea of Thieves attempted to do back in the first year when they gave us that roadmap and they're like, all right, well, we've got big events and then we've got small events. And the small events ended up being the Bilge Rat Adventures, which was, was cool because it was unique and it was something to do besides just grinding out the regular uh, trade companies. And ever since then, we've we've had like a weird... They, it, it's almost like Rare has been like working out what the best way to do events in Sea of Thieves has been for the last couple of years. Like we had Build Red Adventures and then we had Mercenary Missions and then we had uh, like holiday events and we had like double gold weekends and, and double XP weekends and stuff. And, and I, I feel like they finally have kind of come to a way that they can quickly imp implement events without requiring a whole lot of dev time and it was something that joe actually tweeted about the other day where he kind of confirmed like you know the web hooks that they can put into the game to display uh progress on a weekly event or a daily event or a monthly event on the website is kind of the the quick and dirty way of testing whether or not these are actually going to work out but it feels like they they like how things have been running with like the the splash tail event and the uh, the anniversary of the original three uh, updates that they had in the first year um, and, and they're kind of pushing this out as like a main thing. So now we're actually having actual daily events uh, pop up that you can you can always go to uh, cthes dot com and you can check out if you go to um the uh, the game tab and there's actually an event hubs uh area that you can click on and once you're logged in you can actually see all of the daily bounties uh when they start when they end what your progress is on them and what you'll get for them and then you'll also have the the larger ones so 
one of the, the regular events that they'll have are things like uh, Fortnites, uh, which are, are basically a play on words to to go do a fort at, at uh, every Friday night. Um, have you done this yet? I have not, uh, but I want to. So yeah, Friday nights, any stronghold item will get uh, a bonus when you cash it in. Yeah. That's which great. Is, it's nice. It's kind of like a, a good way to kind of start off your, your weekend warrior sessions yeah. on CFEs. I kind of wish it was all fort loot. Yeah. Uh, instead of just stronghold items. Um, but I, you know, I, Fortnite's is a great play on words. I just wish it was more specifically the entire fort. Yeah. Anything just from the fort. Yeah. It, it, it really makes me wonder if, if they just couldn't, uh, program the, the tags for the items that show up in a fort because it's, it's a random yeah. loot pool. Yeah. But the stronghold items themselves have to be acquired from actual forts. Well, no, because you can get them the from from the the fleets and stuff too. Yes. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. See that that would be an interesting thing because the stronghold items typically you would get from a fort, but you can acquire those in other means as well too. So, I wonder if it's strictly from forts or if you could pick them up from a fleet. And turn those in and still get the bonus. I yeah, I don't know. To, mm. I have to test that out. I hadn't thought. But about I like that I like now. the uh, concept because Friday night seems like a good night to have some kind of in-game event. Yeah the the Walker. the interesting thing too is is that this is a pretty it's a pretty long time frame. It runs from seven p.m. Uh, to or seven p.m. to seven a.m. Uh, BST time which is i'm trying to think when that is that's eight hours ahead so that's like 11 a.m friday to 11 p.m friday pst yeah and that's it's it's the one thing that i have noticed about these uh daily events is that it definitely seems very british standard time centric and that's not that's not too bad for Americans like most most Americans can can get on because there's a, a somewhere between a five to eight hour time difference and the time window is big enough that you can generally get something turned in during that time the the group that suffers the most from this I think is going to be the Australian communities because mm-hmm. I think yeah. this is kind of like during the middle of their day a day ahead and unless you have like the middle of Saturday off to do this, you, you may not get the benefit of, of the fortnights. So mm. I'm wondering if there's a way that they know what servers are, are for UK servers. They know what servers are, are supporting the align, the Australian servers. I feel like there just needs to be like a region based time zone for, for this. So yeah, you're going to get people that hop from the UK servers to benefit off of the bonus, and then they'll pop over back home to their American servers. And then they've got an Australian friend that they can jump into an Australian server and they may game game the system, but I I don't see that being any more detrimental to, to the system than uh, discord Alliance servers where they, they would be just grinding without threat all day anyway. Yeah. I mean, the other time zone that kind of gets, in the middle of this is uh, for the gold rush hour that uh, yeah. is British summertime or British standard time and Pacific time. But what about people who live in Eastern, Eastern U S like it's yeah. sort of an inconvenient time for them. Uh, yeah. So hmm. do you like, do you have the information to kind of dive into the gold rush? Available? Yeah. Gold, so gold rush uh, during the hours between uh, 6 and 7 p.m. British and Pacific time, uh, you'll enjoy a 1.5x multiplier caching in all loot. So it's it's nice that they're doing this, but it's weird that it's only for an hour and yeah. that it's it's just for for two time zones yes. out of out of all the time zones that we have. It's it's kind of crazy that they've picked those main ones and i and and it's weird because i think it, it just anecdotally the people that i know play the most are either you know down south in the united states or in california which is fine for most of the californians but 
I feel really bad for the folks that have to stay up late just to benefit from an hour's worth of treasure, which yeah. you kind of have to, you know, if you want to capitalize on it, you really kind of have to get stuff ready before then. So, you know, if you get home at five and you got stuff to take care of, you may not be able to jump on at 6 p.m. to to be able to to take advantage of this and get stuff turned in by seven. So Yeah, I do. I mean, I do like that they have these hooks on the website now. Uh, I think, you know, eventually we'll see that stuff migrate into the game more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I look at things like time-limited events in games like Splatoon 2 where they have the Salmon Run, which only runs like certain hours of the day. Man. Right? But they tell you in-game, oh, this is active now. or Yeah. uh, So it would be it would be nice and much more clear for users who don't read patch notes if uh you know you get a server message on when it's Fortnite or when it's uh, gold rush time yeah uh, that you know this thing is active now or <laughs> yeah you know well they've got they've got the server alerts for when servers are going down they do. that would be a, that would be a great way if they could work out how that works and and just push that to events cuz i I mean, how do you expect players who are predominantly playing in their living room on Xboxes to try and yeah. like they have to have their phone with them to be able to check and see like what their progress is, what the the times are, like is it active right now? And just looking at the 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 event hub right now, the one thing that I'm noticing is the banner at the top says the courage of or the competition for courage has ended and it wants to show me how I fared. That's cool. I don't care. I know how I ended. I'm done looking at that. Like take what's, what's current, what's, what's going on right now available for me and keep that up to date. Like keep it, keep it region based. So I know what times I have left and keep the, the stuff that's active up there. So I can see like, okay, I've got a whole bar. My dailies are showing here. My weeklies are showing here. My monthlies are showing here Yeah, and the, or the time limited items are showing here. And it's got this progress on there. Like, we've we've it, 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 there's a way to do it and i i wish that they would kind of take another step forward and push this so that it's even more uh accessible right yeah. off the bat without having to dive into the event hub um, i agree with but, that but even it, just looking at the event hub like some of the the daily bounties show your when it's active in your local time zone at least it does yeah. for me yeah. and then you scroll down and it says fortnites are this time, oh, British Standard Time. Why yeah. doesn't it show me the time? <laughs> like that, that's active in my local area, and the same sort of thing with Gold Rush. It's like if I didn't live in Pacific Time, I'd have to figure out when this thing was active, uh, since yeah. it's not showing me in my local time. Yeah, it's, I it's, imagine it's... this is a thing that that Rare will only get better at, and this is their first stab at an, an event hub, and you know they can improve and iterate even. Probably before the next update, they could make some of those changes. So, yeah, and and to dive into the daily updates, um, this has been an interesting thing because I I was looking at some of the rewards for these daily bounties, and the daily bounties are it's nice that we have them. It's super random though. Like there's, <laughs> there's just such a random, I'm looking at some of these and I'm like, they're starting in four days or starting in five days. One of these is to deliver an orchid pondy to the hunter's call on June 5th, between 5 PM and June 6th to four, four fifty nine PM. Right. I, I am not going to remember on June 5th that I need to go no. fish up an orchid pondy <laughs> to turn to turn into the hunter's call for three thousand gold. Yeah. <laughs> so well, here's the other I, thing about that. Like, if you happen to do that in that time, but you didn't even look at daily bounties, you're like, "Oh, I just got a bunch of doubloons." Like, what was that for? Like, you have no idea. Yes. Uh, that oh, in fact that's just right. happened to us when we were playing uh, like oh, an hour yeah. ago. We got thirty <laughs> doubloons. <laughs> we're like, "Why did we just get doubloons?" Oh, it yeah. Was a skeleton ship. So that's why. Yep. And, it, and, and it's funny because I, I was really confused. Nothing popped up on my screen in game to tell me. And, and I actually thought that I had hit an achievement and I went yeah. looking and I'm like, nothing that gives me doubloons for killing a skeleton ship hit a mark at any point. So I just got 30 doubloons and it wasn't until you just said that, that it clicked. 
And I realized, <laughs> oh yeah, duh, the Damn the man. skeleton thing. I totally forgot that. So there, there's, and this is something that counteracts a statement that was made by Shelley Preston back in October of 2018 in regards to the set values for cargo uh, deliveries and why those had set values because the the variance on the quality of the item would have given uh would would be giving you a different value and they wanted to not have any randomness to the value because they didn't want players to not understand why this was a little bit more than last time and why this was a little bit less than this time and then attribute that to the quality of the supplies so say you had a crate of uh, rum and you jumped up twice and you got a little bit less than uh than you did the last time you got a perfect crate in and you started to think well crap i can't jump at all i can't get any cracks because if i do then it's going to deplete in value so they made certain levels that that had to crack to before it finally degraded in value now we've got dailies that are for arbitrary things like delivering three bounty skulls today will earn you an extra three thousand gold nothing in game is going to tell me that that happened and right. nothing in, in game is going to e explain why I got 3,000 gold. But I know that at one point, while I was turning in a bunch of skulls for an Order of Souls ledger, I got an extra 3,000 gold and I didn't notice. I had no clue. Yeah. I think I saw an exchange on Twitter between Joe Neat and somebody else um, where they were asking about that very thing. And his explanation was it was a lot easier for them to sort of build the back end, have it web uh, viewed via the web first. And then they can, you know, build it yep. in the game as they go. And I think that, uh, you know, as we're talking, like, I'm sure that Rare feels the same way that you do, right? Yeah. And it's a matter of they have to build this foundation and figure out the right way to display all this stuff in game. You know, just like Tall Tale Checkpoints took more than a year to put in the game. Like, uh, yeah. I, I, I do trust that they will iterate because Rare is constantly iterating on every aspect of this game. So I yep. feel like it's only going to be a matter of time. I think, uh, you know, as people play this stuff, and if Xbox players especially, like, don't understand why they're getting extra 3,000 gold, um, you know, as they give that feedback to Rare, I'm sure um, we'll see changes in the future. Yeah, and, and that's a great way to, to kind of point out that while I'm frustrated, I'm extremely happy that this is even a thing now because for the longest time I was just wanting a way for them to to get weeklies into the game Same. even if it was even if it was quick and dirty and this is definitely quick and dirty but I'd rather have this than nothing because at least now I'm getting a little bit of something cool a little bonus that I know that they'll eventually work out how to build in the UI and I wonder if this is, I, I, I kind of, I would love to know, I'd love to talk, talk to Mike about this because I know that Mike was so, so concerned about keeping the immersion with the game by limiting how much UI there is yep. so that you, you don't constantly have these, these pop-ups, these, these overlays on your game that it doesn't take away from the experience while you're playing. And and that's where you run into the that's where you clash heads when it comes to designers and developers when you have to build a game but you have to educate people at the same time and the best way to do that is to have information for them readily that they can see and understand and perceive in game but you want to make the game look pretty and yeah i i don't envy them but i'm very grateful to them for continuing to push boundaries on what they're doing with the game so if you're listening to this and you're not sure what I'm talking about, if you head over to seeathieves.com forward slash event dash hub, H-U-B, you can see once you log in, you'll see all the, the things that we're talking about as far as the daily bounties, as far as the, the regular events like the, the gold rush and the fortnights, and also some of the time limited events. Um, right now we've got a time limited event that's going from May 7th to June 8th. And I'm assuming this is this the times for this or PST because it doesn't say BST 
and it's it's th- so i'm hoping that they're in pst but they're running from may 27th 4 p.m pst to june 8th 4 p.m uh pst and some of these are there there there's two of them they're going for the next eight days and all you have to do is whilst under the reaper's bone emissary and correct me if i'm wrong uh you have to turn in three reaper's chests um and you have to turn in three reaper's bounties that's right. And, and then you, there's another one on top of that. There's three. Oh, is there? Th- oh, there's there is a third, third one. one. Yeah. This is okay. the one that I just shook my head. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this one because it's a, you know, a 10 day long yeah. challenge and it's flying the Reaper bone flag yourself, emissary, and then turning in 10 Reaper's bones, emissary flags. Yeah. Oof. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. This kind of goes back to the the arena challenge. I I was able to get my my fluffy danger kitty, but mm-hmm. I this is one of those things like I don't know. I mean, there's going to be ways for people to to work this out. Like if you yeah. if you work with other people, you can log into the same server. Just take some practice. You got to sign in at the, or set sail at the same time. You can get a couple ships on a server, and you can farm this out if you really really need to. The the interesting thing about this is like you're going to have to expect to see more Reaper's Bone emissary flags out there for this to work. Right. And I'm wondering, like, I'm, I'm wondering if this is one of the, the methods that they're testing out to see if this is how they're going to be able to keep people using the emissary flags mm-hmm. and, and if this is like this is the the incentive like you'll get a couple new emotes if you do this like i'm already two out of ten i know of one that i've actually turned in i I can't think of one other one that i've actually turned in though that's the weird thing yeah same i have two out of ten and we just turned in one and then yeah there was another one that i guess i wasn't paying attention to i don't remember when i would have turned in a reaper bone flag yeah before this Maybe they just gave us one one for free. Maybe it was a mulligan. Possible. Possible. <laughs> <laughs> it's really strange. So on top of this, we have another event that's going on. If the dailies weren't enough and the regular ones weren't enough and this time-limited Reapers one wasn't enough, the Hunter's Hall is back and I could care less. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if if you want to go out, you got you – got, um, if you're listening to this at the time of recording, you're going to have around 17 days. You're, you you got to fish another 300 Ruby splash tails for a whopping 150 ancient coin, which I'm sorry, dude, I, I, I would like to have the ancient coins. I'd rather just go do gold hoarders and hope for an ancient skelly. Cause Same. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know that I can spend another couple days fishing 300. Yeah ruby splash tails well the last time they did the hunter's hall uh it was a great figurehead it was maybe my favorite figurehead in the game that was the, i think uh, it is you was, love that, that one the prize right and, yeah the gold digger right uh, yes i definitely fished up 300 <laughs> ruby yeah splash tails and turned them in was it 300 or was it fewer than that i i remember it being 300 okay yeah so i did that and uh I was fine with that because the figurehead was awesome. 150 ancient coins is just not enough to get me to do it again. So how much ancient coin would they have to, because it seems like it's a matter of, of uh, bartering yeah. at this point. So how much would it be with three, three, 300 ancient coin be enough? One per Ruby splash tail. I think 500 would, uh, I'd start That'd, to crack. You'd start to crack at 500. Yeah, man. So they would they would have to bump it up quite a bit just to to justify that. Which I I mean if they <laughs> this is the dumbest idea in the world, and I, the only reason I'm thinking of it now is because it would fit so well if they did this. But instead of 500 ancient coin, they gave you a pet. But the pet was a ruby splash tail that was like a magic carp from Pokemon. <laughs> where, all it did was flop on the deck yeah. <laughs> and you, you could shoot it out of the cannon, <laughs> but all it was, was just a, a stupid Ruby flash tail pet that you could pick up and it would flop in your hands. 
and all it did was flop around on deck that was that would be its only thing i would do it for that because it would be dumb and and unique <laughs> and and i would go for that so yeah, yeah. rare if you're, if you're listening feel free to make magic carp in the form of a ruby splash tail and i'll do this hunter hunter's hall again it could be easier than that you know i know they are doing the premium um ruby splash tail outfit but oh, they could have, if they had a ruby splash tail hat oh, man. that was like just a pirate hat with just a ruby a... splash tail <laughs> on the top <laughs> Like a billy bass or something, right? Oh, man. <laughs> I would wear that. And I probably oh, would fish God. up 300 ruby splash tails in order to get the ruby <laughs> splash tail hat. Like, if it was something like that, I'd be into it. Uh, uh, do you want to go into the ruby splash tail emporium stuff? I feel like we probably should. We we can. Yeah, sure. All right. I, oh, my God. This is so ugly. Fortnite has invaded Sea of Thieves. And... If you wanted, if you didn't believe me, head over to the Pirate Emporium, folks, because there is a Ruby Splash Tail Monarch, mind you, royalty costume where you can put on a costume that makes you look like Fortnite characters. It's it's so gaudy. I I don't it's so I, gaudy. Yeah. It, and the thing about this is they went all out. They, like this wasn't just a, like it's almost as if. Ruby Splash Tail just like infected the entire team and they're like, hey, you know, it'd be foolish and fun and exciting. And like, what's that? They're like a Ruby Splash Tail ship collection. What? I, oh man, I well, hate I'll it. I'll tell you what. Wait, okay. did you just say you hate it? I hate it because it's so <laughs> elaborate, but it's so gaudy. Here's the thing. I, I both love it and hate it. I love how gaudy it is and how like <laughs> ridiculous the set is. It's one of the most ridiculous that Rare has put out. And it's fantastic. Like in its detail, <laughs> it's fantastic. Like the wheel that it has a hook uh, at the top. Uh, it, the, it has you know, the Billy Bass. Right? It, yeah, and it has <laughs> the sort of Billy Bass thing going on. What I don't like about it is that it's full price. You know, I, I love it as a, a sort of nod to the fact that Ruby Splash Tales are the sort of thing that everybody loves to hate on, and that it's yeah. so gaudy, but the fact that it's the full price of all their other custom customizations is just a little much. Like, I would I would mm. certainly pay less for it, because I wouldn't expect to use it a whole lot. <laughs> but, but you love I, it I, so I much. It goof, but the fact that it's <laughs> full price is like, yeah, I'll wait for a sale, but... Yeah, I I had a I went last night with uh or was it last night? I think it was two nights ago. I went with my my uh my murder crew um that I sail with and one of them specifically bought these just to tick off our 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 other crewmates. And it was yeah. hilarious because of the reaction, but I'm so glad I didn't have to sail on that ship that night because <laughs> I hate I hate how good this looks because it's it, you're right it is one of the most elaborate sets that they put out and it's awesome it's yeah. so detailed I love it I love the anchor uh, I love the the wheel I love the cannons everything just looks so good but I it's it's <laughs> it's like the rabbits man I love Mario and rabbits uh, kingdom battle that game yep but if you took out the rabbits and just put Koopa Troopas and uh, uh, Goombas and Chain Chomps, I would that game would be perfect. But I can't stand the rabbits; they're so dumb. <laughs> and that's how I feel about the Splash Tail man. I can't yeah, handle yeah. the Splash Tail. But this set looks amazing, and I hate yep. the Monarch for the the Monarch costume. But I'm gonna see it a lot. Um, the one thing that I did want to talk about the Pirate Emporium is the the three sheets uh, to the wind emote, which if if you watch the the old videos that that they used to put out on a weekly basis, uh, as much as I did, you you could you started to notice that Joe Neat, the executive producer for the game, had a lot of uh, uh, mannerisms, and he always talked with his hands, as most people generally do, because they like to express things in multiple ways. And it always looked like he was kind of palming a ball, like he was polishing a, a, ba a bowling ball or something. They made an emote that's for free right now that is based on his, his actions. And it's, it's awesome. I, I absolutely love it. 
it's such an endearing thing to to do for Joe because he's he's been such a good sport about all the teasing that he gets in Sea of Thieves uh, and, and outside of Sea of Thieves when people um, are, are just doing content and stuff. They've they've done some really fun things, but if you if you get a chance, head over to the Pirate Emporium. Make sure you pick up this emote and and use it uh, in in a video somewhere or as, as a clip and send it to Joe. Let him know about it because I'm I'm sure he probably gets a kick out of it and stuff. But um, a, along with the free emote, there's also a, a Lost Treasures sale going on right now. So I would highly recommend if there's been a few things out there like emote sets or pets uh cosmetics things like that that you've been wanting to pick up but have been holding off on there's a sale section in sea of thieves uh or in in the the pirate emporium that you can go and actually take a look at and get a chance to uh see if you can get these for a little bit cheaper which i think cj you actually did right i got yeah the um admiral or the sovereign uh emotes yeah yeah so have you been big into the emotes? I was I was talking to my buddy uh, just before we recorded, and I'm I'm not a huge emote guy, but is that something that you you find a lot of value in? Uh, I like some of the initial packs. Yeah, I think it's sort of diminishing returns now that I've sort of filled out the wheel uh, in the game. Mm-hmm. But I I do like them. I don't use a whole lot of them regularly, but I like the fact that they're in there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I appreciate that it it helps kind of express things when you don't necessarily want to use voice uh, or the chat wheels kind of failing you and stuff. But there there's definitely some good sales in there to be had. And if you if you want to take a chance to on maybe you want to buy the Splashtail Monarch bundle. I'm not going to judge you for it. Have fun. There's a, a bundle going on in the store only. Uh, there's a, a cat bundle and a Splashtail bundle. So if you want to pick up the costume uh, on top of a thousand ancient coins and 25,000 gold, then you can head over to the Microsoft store and pick that up. I think you'll probably get a discount if you're a Game Pass subscriber as well. There's also a feline bundle out there that's uh, it has the uh, Cavalier Wildcat with the Sovereign Wildcat outfit and the Cutlass. Uh, hat, jacket, sails, peg leg, and trousers for your pirate. You'll also get 550 ancient coins and 10,000 gold. Uh, that's only available in the actual store. So those are going to be things that if if you want them, I would highly recommend going in and picking those up because those typically change out when the next update rolls in, uh, which at this time we don't actually have a date for the June update. Um yeah, I oh man, I, I can't I can't handle the <laughs> the splash tail stuff. <laughs> so uh CJ, you've been playing this game for a couple of years. Yes. And back when the game first came out, based on on some of the criticisms that the game got, something that the community actually got upset about was some of the uh cutlasses and some of the figureheads in the game weren't distinguished enough for the price tag that they were that they were actually asking for it and i'm speaking specifically to the sovereign cutlass uh and sovereign figurehead and the bilge rat figurehead and the bilge rat uh, cutlass so there were variants on those like the uh the scurvy and the um oh i think i just blanked out on what the other one was uh but there there used to be uh scurvy build and castaway ship sets that were in the game and around this time two years ago actually two years and five days was when they took these out of the game because people said hey these aren't distinguished enough we don't like them we want better stuff to spend our money on and rare was like all right cool we're going to take these out of the game if you want to buy them you can hold on to them if you buy them but they're not going to be back in the game two years later they're back in the game. Yep. And I, I'm, I'm kind of upset about this. I shouldn't be um, because they have every reason to bring these back. But the ship right now has content that two years ago, Rare said that they were sorry that they put these in and they, that they'll release more varied com- cosmetics into the game at a later point. 
Uh, and they said that they were basically going to be updating these. They never updated them, but they put them back into the game. They're cheaper now. And they kind of rounded out the rest of the ship sets. So if you're if you were playing with the old Sea Dog set and or the Bilge Rat set or the Sovereign set uh, or the Admiral set, all of the cannons, capstans, wheels, all of those are now in the game. Even the flags, uh, you can go and spend two million gold on them, like I did, to pick them all up. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Am I wrong for being upset about this? Like, yes, should I just? Wrong. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, here's that's the, fine. I mean, here's the thing. Like back when they took those things out, there wasn't a whole lot to spend your money on, and those color variants were like sixty-five thousand gold each. And this was at a time in the game when uh, your gold earnings were not nearly as high as they are now. So sixty-five thousand a piece was. I do was have high. to correct you on that. Well, how much was uh, it? Each of the figureheads alone were 140,000. Oh my gosh. Okay. And I remember I remember this because <laughs> if you if you don't believe me, you can go back to I looked this up. I w- I went back. Episode 15 of the Keel Hall podcast <laughs> has in the show notes and it's in the episode all of the costs that you had to get to get all of the figureheads that were going to be removed. Mm. It was going to to get all of them. 460,000 gold wow. in a time I knew it was pricey. Yeah, in a time when all you had was level 50 voyages and forts and the price. Kraken. But the Kraken didn't even drop loot. It didn't even drop anything. It was just an annoyance. Well, at, you ju- time, at the time when those got removed, forts were on a every 3 hour basis, right? It wasn't like it is yeah. now, right? Yeah, it yeah. was every 3 hours a fort would pop up. They were highly contested. Your best bet was to run uh, merchant missions and shout out to Bodhi Slam because he's the one guy that I knew at the time who grinded out the total uh, to get the cutlasses and the, the figureheads. The cutlasses still aren't in the game, uh, but the figureheads are back. And to grind all of it out, he had to, he had to grind in the space of I want to say it was two weeks. We had to grind out four hundred eighty thousand gold back during a time when forts were on a three hour time span. There was no there was no random loot laying around. There wasn't no, washed right. up treasure. <laughs> if you wanted it, you had to go go dig it up. You had to go kill it from a skeleton, or you had to go catch it in a cage. There weren't even cargo crates. So oh. I, that's that's where I'm coming <clears throat> from <laughs> when I say I'm <laughs> upset about this. It was a lot of gold. We spent a lot of gold yes. for for us to get these, and at that time, it was like, cool, I got these. I'm the only I'm I'm of a small percentage of players that able that were able to earn enough to to buy these at the time and now they're back they're half the cost and anyone can pick yep. them up i'm okay with and it I'd, though because they completed right. the rest of the ship sets and the, with the cannons and capstans and flags uh for all of those things uh and yeah. I I really appreciate the fact that those are in the game <laughs> like i did buy the uh you know slightly recolored versions of all of those cosmetics uh but i don't know i have so much gold now that it's like why not have them in the game yeah well i'll i'll i will let that go i will work that out i will have therapy with my cats if necessary (laughs) so i'm glad that there i i will say this i am super glad that it we're finally getting those sets flushed out so that we have all of the pieces available because it always did feel really weird that we knew that some of those were being worked on but we never actually saw them in game like there was a point where i think one of the uh one of the what was it uh sovereign i think the one of the sovereign set pieces the wheel was miscolored but it was the color for one of the other sets and it was like wait why is why is this colored for one of the other like we don't have this other set why is this color like and it was like kind of at that point it clicked and it's like oh they have the other set pieces they just aren't putting them in the game yet Mm -hmm. but we got those in the game now so i'm I'm happy about that uh and we also got a whole bunch of quality of life changes too and the quality of life changes it's uh, maybe this kind of ties back into why i feel so down about this update uh because a lot of the quality of life changes that came in 
our great quality of life changes, but I feel like it was at the cost of reintroducing some old bugs that came in. And some of the bugs, I think, are some of the more more rough ones, like the uh, the cannon bug. Like they fixed the bug where you don't have to worry about what type of cannon you're actually loading into the cannon. That's fixed. Thankfully. But now if you, oh yeah, <laughs> thankfully, yeah, that was a rough one. But now if you have the cannon at an extreme angle, there's a chance that the cannonball or yourself will shoot off to the side of of the cannon instead of going out you'll just be shot to the to the back or to the front of the ship which is really tough when you're trying to board um especially if you don't have a good angle on the ship that you're trying to shoot out to but they went in and some of the quality of life changes that they put into the game uh they added an armory chest to the ferry of the dam so if you're getting spawn camped and you're sitting there with a sword and pistol when you really need a blunder they they have that available now. You can now re-equip what weapons you have, uh, which is great because that can that can definitely make or break a situation on trying to reclaim your ship if necessary. Um, Alliance nameplates uh, are now purple, which I know is uh, kind of a, a I don't know. I haven't heard anyone online. I haven't seen anyone get upset about this. I thought it was going to be a much bigger deal when it actually came out, but. I love it. I think the purple nameplates look great, and it, it's nice to see the difference between who's in the alliance versus who's not. Um, actually, helped me out the other night. Yeah, I haven't and, seen this particular change yet, but I think it's a great change because before, I know a lot of people were very happy that they could, uh, you know, shoot over to an alliance doing a fort of the damned and kind of, you know, cause chaos. Very yep. easily, since a lot of alliances don't memorize what the gamer tags are on the other yeah. ships, because gamer tags are often like really long and hard to, especially if you yeah. have like two galleons, it's hard to memorize the other four people's names. Um, mm-hmm. So that was really just taking advantage of the fact that, you know, you're not going to know necessarily who you're allied with. And now that can't happen doesn't mean you can't still cause chaos. I think you can. You just can't do it in front of people in sort of plain sight. Yeah, yeah. It, you're the game is is less disguising you by by keeping you on the same like visual level as as the people that you're allied with. Right. The nice thing is is that it's you can still the alliance nameplates don't make it so that you can't attack each other. It just shows who's in your alliance, so you can still betray your alliance members uh, as much as you want Mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll wonder what's going on, but at least, at least if you're trying to work together with another crew in an alliance and you're not trying to worry about like who's, who's on that ship or who's not on that ship or trying to change your outfit to try and match up so that you're, you know, like, okay, well, all the guys in their, their full ghost garb are the ones that are, are with us. And anyone who's not in that is, is, uh, not part of the, the alliance it's it makes it a little bit nicer for for you to to not have to worry definitely the uh rowboat storage crates keybind has been changed um on controllers i think it's y now correct okay and for keyboards it's uh r and that's something I think a lot of people are happy about you hop onto a rowboat and you want to open the chest all you have to do is hit a button that won't make you sit down I, I would I would love to see this go a step further and allow us to change the interaction keys for all of the rowboat interaction points so that if I wanted because I still run into the problem where I've got a bunch of treasure on a rowboat and I want to grab it. But every time I try to pick up one skull at a weird angle, I always end up sitting down. So I kind of wish that there was something where I could either change it or it was more contextual so that treasure switched over to R as well. So there's less likelihood that I'd sit down, more likelihood that I might hit the one angle that I need to be at to open up my storage chest as opposed to grabbing a piece of treasure. Um, The mermaid spawns have changed. Those are kind of working as they were. It it seems like they kind of reverted. It's it's weird because unless you go out and actually see a science this, it feels like mermaids just kind of spawn a lot quicker, which was it's kind of a pain when you're trying to go out and you're trying to actually sneak on sh- onto a ship that's pretty far out. But 
it's nice when you're trying to get back to your ship quickly, uh, especially if you get knocked off randomly. Yeah, I can't. I honestly can't tell. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know with the past two or three patch notes, they've had changes to mermaids, and honestly, you could have fooled me. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't mm-hmm. have noticed uh, that they spawn yeah. quicker. Like, it just doesn't seem like they spawn quick enough still in, in some <laughs> instances. <laughs> they're never there fast enough, man. No. It's, it's never, they're always, they're always hanging around for way too long when you don't want them to, but they're never there quickly. It's, I can't even make the reference that I want to just because of, of the reference that it is, but they're always, they're, they're always inopportune when, when they should be Johnny on yes. the spot with some things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The, the one that I thought was interesting, uh, the new new players by default, um, and this will kind of tie into to some of the conversation that I wanted to have with you uh, when I asked you to, to, to come to the show, is that new players will have crew status tags and sticky radial items enabled by default. Um, how do you feel about the sticky radial items? And I'm it. not even sure. Okay. I love it and changed uh, when that setting came into the game, I changed that uh, immediately. Yeah, so that way you don't and and as if I'm remembering this correctly, that's basically instead of having to hold the direction for the item that you want, once you move to that direction, whatever item that's there, it'll just stay on that. That's correct. In, yes. Instead of reverting back to a neutral position, which I'm surprised that was even a, a thing to begin with. Like I, I always felt like it should have been a sticky radial. Um and that kind of ties into because we're going to be getting a lot of new players in this coming week. Uh, sea of Thieves is coming to Steam. It's July 3rd, uh, $40. You still have to have your Xbox Live account. A lot of the stuff I talked about last episode. And one of the thoughts that you came to me with was a brilliant idea. And that was, uh, what, are, what are some of the things that people should know kind of going into Sea of Thieves for the first time. And I wanted to, to kind of turn the question around to you. What are some of the things that you think people should know uh, or, or you wish you knew when you first started <laughs> Sea of Thieves? I mean, I have a couple of things. Uh, the first is to embrace the PvPVE nature of this game and uh, prepare for ships to be aggressive to you but embrace friendly play if that happens right like yeah uh, be a defensive player but also um you know be unexpected enjoy the sort of unexpected player interactions that this game uh, uniquely can produce yeah and yeah. also recognize the signs <laughs> like how to recognize uh, when a ship is potentially aggressive versus friendly. Like, um, you know, there are a lot of sort of unspoken things in the game. Like if you're a friendly crew, putting your can, pointing your cans to the sky, like is one of those things. Um, so yeah, just l- watch approaching ships and <laughs> try to recognize what their intentions might be. Yeah. And I reached out to Twitter and uh, you guys gave me a really good list. Uh, a lot of the stuff on this list, probably not actually accurate. So <laughs> oh, no. I, I don't know how much, how much of this I can actually, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll read some of these guys because I think a lot of them are just funny. Most of these are not accurate. So <laughs> Uh, Thor von Blitz wrote in, he said, uh, ringing the bell in the crow's nest after wiping the enemy crew stops the enemy from respawning. <laughs> that's not, that's not true. It's not a thing. Uh, no. e- equipping the Kraken gloves makes you swim faster. <laughs> that's, that's not true either. This, this uh, kind of stuff reminds me of the whole, uh, the skeleton fort cloud when the eyes are red, that means they're close to finishing it. <laughs> it's yeah. like these things that have sort of popped up that in in the the lore of Sea of Thieves that are untrue, but people still believe them and, and mention them. So many myths about this game that <laughs> still to this day persist. 
the last one that he put in here was that the Imperial Sovereign Helmet, which is a uh, conquistador Spanish helmet, for those that don't know, gives you a buff against headshots. That's <laughs> that's. There's no headshots in this game. That's right. There's no headshots. Uh, all the body shots count as as one. Um, there are a ton of these. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. That the the Kraken doesn't spawn at Kraken's Watchtower, Kraken's Fall, or Blackwater Enclave. Uh, <laughs> the dog wrote in and said, "I spent my first week playing the game trying to find the Kraken." Yeah, the. <laughs> That is true. Uh, The Kraken spawns after a fort goes down because it cannot um, exist during the same world events as uh, skeleton fleets or skeleton forts. By the way, yeah, if you're a Steam player and you're coming into this and and you're just trying to get some information about the game, yeah, skeleton fort clouds means that there's loot to be had after you kill 15 waves of skeleton at a skeleton fort. Uh, Krakens will spawn after that. You have to kill the Kraken tentacles to get out of the murky water that's there. Megalodons have personalities. They will fight you if you shoot at them. Regardless, skeleton ships will pass by you without touching you as long as you aren't aggressive towards them. Some of the quick ones. Um, the A lot of the uh, the things that I will say, um, let's see, what's what's another one that, that someone else put in here that, uh, oh yeah, don't drop your anchor. Stop dropping drop your, your anchor. anchor. Yeah. Well, here's the thing Ra- with that. Like, I, I know a lot of people say don't drop the anchor. And for me, that's true. But I'm a more experienced player. So I don't need to drop the anchor. You can, you know, come to a stop by pulling up the sails. But to me, like, I wouldn't necessarily tell that to a new player. It's like, do that if you feel you need to. Uh, that's fair. And raise the anchor and pull up the sails uh, if if you're safer, if you feel like that's more, you know, beneficial to you. Like if you can't just raise the sails and come to a stop, <laughs> go ahead, drop yeah. the anchor, but then raise the sail and then lift the anchor because yeah. it'll, it'll make it easier for you to escape if you have to do that in a hurry. Yeah, I think that's the the better advice there is is make sure that you're like once you're where you're once you hit your destination, bring the sails up so you don't sail away and then keep your anchor up so that you can get away quickly. Uh, yes. and, and on, on top of that, um, Thor sent me a, a list of things that are better to actually tell people to make sure that you keep your head on a swivel so that you can always keep an eye out for ships. Yeah. Um, that's no tre- <laughs> He says no treasure is yours until you cash it in. That is very accurate. Um, learn to slow down with that. I would I would say don't carry uh, more treasure than you're okay with losing, <clears throat> because yeah. you, you will lose treasure in this game. Like, <laughs> <laughs> none of us who have played yeah. this game for any length of time have been able to cash everything in. Right? We, there are always points where you're going to have to take the L. So just be, yeah. be mindful of that and don't get too <laughs> upset and don't carry more treasure than you're willing to lose. Yes. Yeah. The really good advice. Definitely. Don't, uh, don't worry if you're, if you're worried about losing it, then you should already be at the outpost turning it in. <laughs> That's right. Um, he also wrote, he also gave me a good list. He says, uh, <laughs> I don't know how much I agree. With, <laughs> I don't know if, how much I agree with this. Um, but he says that, uh, sorting things in barrels and crates makes life easier sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't um if you t- if the banana is the worst fruit in the game don't use the banana for for pete's sake <laughs> i've stopped picking up the banana at all like yeah. the barrels i just don't bother anymore the the good the thing that's good for the banana is after you're done on an island and you you don't you're not in threat of anything you can go grab a bunch of bananas and top off your health yep. um, but the fruit have varying difference of, of heal levels as well too and uh you can sail into the wind and still keep moving tacking is not a is not a thing if you went online and you're like oh man i'm gonna be playing a sailing game i better learn how to sail oh tacking this is an important thing i need to understand if i want to stay in the wind you can sail into the wind it's not that kind of game yeah so those are those are a bunch of things that I think a lot of people, um, hopefully, if you're listening to this and you're playing on Steam for your first time, this will help you out. Uh, maybe this will help. Uh, two more things. Oh, two more yes. things. What do you Real got? Quick. 
Uh, I would say watch streams of experienced players and watch how they play, like, and what they do. And you can learn a lot from watching people play that you may not have known. Like, there are a lot of things in this game that are sort of unspoken exploits or things you may not even realize are a thing, like sword dashing. Like, that's not yeah. explained anywhere in the game. So watching other people play uh, can be very important. The other thing is play with headphones or at least be able to hear the game audio because so much of this game is communicated through audio that is not necessarily visual. So uh, you may want to do that. Um, yeah. The other thing is uh, don't run away from PvP. You know, I think a lot of people just want to do the PvE stuff, but uh, in you know early on, I think I said that uh, I would only run the white flag <laughs> in the game. But, yeah. uh, you know, once you <laughs> start getting used to fighting other pirates, like, uh, you need that experience, right? Like, I think uh, it's it's good to have that experience, even if you're on the losing end. So as long as you're not carrying more treasure than you're willing to lose, like, don't only run from fights, take people on, learn what to do and what not to do just from experience. Yep. Oh, and to speak to that, PvP is uh, balanced in the sense that no pirate has any more power than you do outside of knowledge. The only thing that makes one pirate better than another, uh, with a couple exceptions that are hardware-based in the game as opposed to skill-based, is that they they just know how to play uh better they understand the ship better they understand angles better uh they they have a, a better idea of of the timings on on different weapons and reloads and stuff there's no there's nothing in this game that will increase the amount of power you have you can pick up powder kegs and use those and those are kind of a power boost because they're a tool that you can implement but they're also a double-edged sword you could definitely hurt yourself a lot more with a powder keg than successfully sinking another ship with one powder keg so uh curse cannonballs and stuff they're all your friends read the details on those when you pick one up because the tool tips for those are what's going to clue you into how to use those but at no point will any pirate out level you there's there's no there's no rpg element to this where someone is going to be more powerful than you they'll they'll outplay you or you'll outplay them and the more you play the game the more you understand the game the better you'll play and that's how you'll get your power yep totally agree. um and stock up whenever you can too that's that's another thing stock up as much as you can the more supplies you have the better off you'll be you don't want to be in a long engagement and not have supplies or run out because you just wanted to raise anchor and get out on the sails or get on on uh on the seas um how much of the uh update little things did you do you feel like getting into because there's a lot that i i feel like i can cover this stuff later on and we're already pretty pretty long in the in the episode here uh, uh whatever you want to do like i think we've covered we've covered the main things i don't think cool. uh, like a lot of the smaller things i don't really have a huge opinion about yeah all right well most of the stuff i think i'm going to hold off for another episode when i can kind of dive into the nitty-gritty uh give you guys a little more color on some of the patch notes the one thing that i did want to jump on that i thought was interesting and and kind of a discussion that i wanted to talk to you about is uh xbox series x and what it's going to mean for sea of thieves um some of the 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 some of the news that's been coming out from Microsoft has been uh, some articles talking about the next generation with backwards compatibility. And Joe actually tweeted about this. He said that uh, the team over in Redmond's um, doing some great stuff to help create improvements for Sea of Thieves on Xbox Series X. And I'm a little mixed on this because uh, for me, it's, it's a, a different situation. But as far as what they're doing with backwards compatibility, uh, the article that I'm going to link in the show notes is talks a lot about making sure that 
backwards compatible titles see significant reductions in the in-game load times from the massive leap in performance based on their NVMe SSD hard drives. So one of the biggest problems with Sea of Thieves, and, and CJ, you can, you can attest to this, uh, is the load times from when you die. Having an SSD can potentially make or break whether or not you win or lose an engagement on the seas, which is a, it's a real kick to the gut to, to have to realize that unless you pay for higher speed hard drives for your, your console or for your PC, there's a good opportunity for you to lose everything that you have because you couldn't load back into the game in time. And from me personally, I, I don't have to worry about this as much. Uh, even though Sea of Thieves is currently on my standard HHD drive in my computer, I used to have it on my SSD and I had that nice load time. But I'm glad to see that the Xbox Series X is going to help improve uh, how the game plays. And I'm hoping for two things. One, the load times get a lot better, but that the frame rate goes up to 60 frames per second uh, for 4K. I hope those two things come out of this backwards compatibility because at the end of the day, I don't think we're going to see uh, a re-release for Sea of Thieves on the Xbox Series X. I don't think we're going to see a, an Xbox Series X version. I think we're just going to have the same game that we have with back compat. So I, I wanted to toss it out to you. Um, you purchased a PC for this. Are you going to be picking up the Xbox Series X? Uh, yeah, I mean, I started playing... When Sea of Thieves came out, I was primarily a console player. So I played yeah. it on the Xbox One X. And um, yeah, at a certain point, you, when you make that realization that, okay, I lost because I didn't load in fast enough... Uh, I ended up getting a gaming PC in part because of Sea of Thieves, but for other reasons too. Uh, yeah. And I was amazed at the difference like that that SSD drive makes. Like it really changes how you look at PvP in this game if you've only been playing on console. So the fact yeah. that uh, Sea of Thieves could benefit from the Hard, the SSD in the Series X, I think that's incredibly exciting uh, from a number of aspects, just for console players to be able to have that sort of fast loading is going to be great. Um, yeah. But I also think that'll bring me back to playing it on a console in front of a TV instead of a PC monitor and uh, my PC setup. Like, And it, I'm excited about that possibility because... You know, things like higher frame rate and that faster loading time really do impact you once you figure out the nitty gritty of this game. Like once you get serious about it, if if yeah. that's the type of player you're going to be, like you're really going to want those things to be uh, as fast as possible. So even though I'm playing, on, I'm playing on a, a PC, I still use a controller because that's just my preferred input method. So. I imagine I'll be going back to the Xbox Series X and a controller in front of a TV very soon. I I really I really want to talk to you when that happens too because I I hate myself for wanting to buy an Xbox One X right now because of that Cyberpunk limited edition because part of me wants that but part of me also wants the Xbox Series X and then I'm trying to rationalize whether or not I should get a, a Series X or if I should just upgrade my actual gaming PC with like a new motherboard, <laughs> new RAM and stuff and keep the keep the video card and get a, a bigger SSD drive. Because yeah. it's just, I, I've got a 4K TV out there that just sits out there. I don't have anything that really takes advantage of that. Yeah, but I'm more a, curious though about what other benefits Sea of Thieves might have besides just frame rate and... Uh, fast loading because you know they're sort of banking on ray tracing is one of their big things uh with yeah. the xbox series x like are are we going to get a graphical improvement as well you know who knows but yeah, that would be great too i mean the game already looks fantastic but um it'll it, it's just going to be really interesting to see how microsoft in general handles 
backwards compatible titles or titles that are going to be moving forward, moving the player base forward to the Series X? I think you are right. And I think you, I think your question is totally going to happen because <laughs> I, I seriously do. And you bring up a really good point because Xbox really is banging on this ray tracing thing. And yeah. I think we're going to get it. And, and my proof of that is not only the fact that what Xbox, uh, what the team in Redmond's doing with uh, Gears 5, for example, uh, bringing ray tracing to that, but also that one of the known issues with Sea of Thieves right now is a visual issue. And if you're playing on PC and you have an NVIDIA RTX GPU, some players are seeing a visual issue where when you're on mythic graph graphic settings, you see these grid lines on the sea. And this has been a known issue for a couple updates now. And the only thing, like I don't run that. I have a, a 1080 and at Mythic, I don't see these. I know I may not be affected by it, but I don't have an RTX card that's capable of ray tracing. But it's clear that they're doing something with ray tracing cards in particular that are based with a grid. And the only thing I can think of is, is that they're going to be bringing ray tracing in conjunction to RTX cards as well as Series X uh, a, a, a ray tracing. And that the, the team in Redmond's the one that's kind of heading that up. So I can't wait to see what Sea of Thieves looks like on the Series X because I, I do think that that backwards compat improvement is is really going to make that game shine just mm, even yeah. more than it already is. And, and I'm excited for that because I can't wait to see how much more beautiful those those sunsets are going are gonna to look. <laughs> yeah, I mean, two years on, I still take screenshots in game uh, pretty regularly mm. just because yeah. it looks so good. But yeah, really does. Um, there is a lot that's going to be coming in the future of Sea of Thieves. Uh, this is the quality of life update. I rare, if you're listening, I, I love you, please. The community is happy to have these. We don't mind having the, the internal, the interim, is that, the, I'm, I'm thinking the different word, maybe we don't mind having it or intermittent updates with quality of life patches in between, uh, because as much as as much as this has fixed some issues, it it brought back old ones, and I'm I'm fine if you guys polish this. I'm okay. I understand that running a game a live game service is a is a, a hard ask, and you guys have done a great job with this as your first step. But I would totally love it if we could have a regular update, a quality of life update, a regular update, a quality of life update. Now that we've got weeklies, we've got dailies, we've got these kind of things to keep us busy. In the meantime, uh, I'm fine having a little break in in the content, especially it gives you time to kind of work on stuff. And I, I don't know, CJ, did you have anything to, to add on to that? I mean, I agree with that uh, in some respects, especially now that we have the event hub. I think that's great. And now that we have the emissary system, that's also like sort of a self-sustaining event system in itself. Um, I, I like new content. <laughs> but, you know, if, if future <laughs> quality of life updates are going to be as content rich as this particular one is, uh, then yes, count me in as somebody who is fine with that sort of balance. Um, you know, I, I what I would just hate for the game, you know, if they if they did a an update that was just bug fixes for people to start dropping out of playing the game. Like that's the only thing I worry mm. about is that player retention because same, you know, having other people on the seas is what makes this game so much fun and the player interaction and sort of unexpected nature of what people are going to do is what makes it fun. So I hope, you know, after the steam release, people stick with the game and I, I just would want that content flow to, to keep people in. <laughs> that's all. Like I wouldn't yeah. want anything to, to sort of drop that. So. Yeah, same here. Well, I think that's going to be that's that's probably going to do it for this week's episode. Uh, again, Steam is coming out uh, with Sea of Thieves on June third. Um, we've got the Blighted bonus if you're a State of Decay fan coming in June. Uh, that's from the tenth to the sixteenth. We'll be diving into more of that in the future when we get a little more details on what we have to do with the trading companies during that time. 
And I think that's going to do it. CJ, if people want to hear about old games and news and just kind of a general scope of the industry and some really good after show content, uh, where can they find that kind of stuff? Well, uh, yeah, I host the Player One Podcast, and that is at playeronepodcast.com or P1 Podcast on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter account is superpack. That's S U P E R P A C. And uh, yeah, we do fun stuff on the Player One podcast with trivia games, and we talk about new stuff and news and retro games and all sorts of stuff. So uh, people can listen to that as well. Some of the best banter on on podcasts I've heard out there, especially oh, considering you. you guys are considering yourself a, a gaming podcast and not a comedy podcast. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Sometimes the line is very much blurred. Yeah, <laughs> there's a little stepping on both sides there for sure. But I, I yeah. love it. Um, thank well, you. thank you so much for joining me. And I, I can't wait to have you back on the show. I, I know we've been talking about doing some of the uh, the news updates as we get more information from uh, the the summer of gaming that's going to be going on with uh, Jeff Keeley. I, I think or it's Game Fest. I can't remember how he what he what he named it. Um, but Microsoft and IGN have a, a slew of news coming out, and I want to do more short short leave episodes with you. So we'll be we'll be looking forward to doing some stuff like that. And Pirates, I think that's going to do it. I'll have the regular outro for you. Uh, I didn't get any responses on the um, Choose Your Own Adventure last week. So if you're out there and you want more of that, feel free to let me know what I'm supposed to be doing on that outpost. Otherwise, I'll go back to uh, Captain's Logs and we'll we'll get some more stories from you folks because I'm good with either. And with that, Pirates, that's going to conclude this episode of Keelhauled Podcast. If you'd like to get a hold of us about some topic that we covered or didn't cover, feel free to do so over at C-A-P-T-L-O-G-U-N at gmail.com or hit me up at Twitter at C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. As always, I welcome you to the Discord server. The link is in the show notes, as always, or on my Twitter bio. And feel free to join. Spend some time with us. There's a lot going on and emissaries just reset. So hopefully you guys got the delivery sales that you wanted hopefully you made that top tier remember there is an achievement to get top tier in each of the different ones independently at least five times and you get that that uh, new gamer score bonus to that and get those achievements unlocked so hopefully you guys uh, uh, landed where you wanted hopefully you wanted to to continue doing that and I'm expecting that after the first five months, we will probably start seeing some of the rewards change. Uh, Maybe that's just a a hint. Maybe I have no clue at all. I probably have no clue at all. But Pirates, I wanted to thank you so much for joining me. As always, uh, there's merchandise. There's tons of ways. I've been streaming a bit more this uh, the last few weeks. And I just want to thank you guys. You guys have been great. It's hectic in the world right now. And I just want to say how much I appreciate and love you and I don't know what I would do without you guys. You guys are the light of my life. So thank you so much. I love you and I look forward to sailing with you on the Sea of Thieves. <laughs>